we were all kind of rocked uh, at 4 o'clock when it came across Bill Shaken of the L.A. Times reporting that the, the Hall of Fame announced that uh, Tom Seaver, um, his family has said that he is suffering from dementia. Uh, he is going to uh, not make any more public appearances, which means he will not be part of the 50th anniversary celebration of the 1969 Mets. Uh, I know my boss at Yes is really, really shaken up. He and Seaver were very close to the point that Tom Seaver is Flip's oldest son's godfather. Okay. Oh, wow. So he's, wow. he's devastated right now. They live next to each other in Connecticut. Wow. And they became very close friends. And uh, it's just, I mean, there's so many, Don and I were talking off the air. There's so many people, maybe not, you know, 20, 30-year-olds, but of, of Don's age, my age, Tom Seaver was a god. I mean, Tom Seaver, I, I mean, he took a, a, a downtrodden franchise like the New York Mets, and he made them important and special and was the leader of the 1969 Mets. And, I mean, the things that he did, and he had the highest percentage of any Hall of Famer before Ken Griffey and then Mariano ever, when no one got that many votes. I think he was a couple of votes short of being unanimous. You can make the case, if you look at Roger Clemens and say that Clemens is, is compromised because of his connection with PEDs, mm -hmm. that Tom Seaver is the greatest right-handed pitcher of all time. You can make that you can argument. Make the case, you you really might could. not win the case, but I think you have a legitimate case to make. That's how great this guy was. He was the shining light of the New York Mets. It, it got ugly toward the end with the, the feud with them, Donald Grant, and with Dick Young. Uh, and he ends up getting traded, which I think still rips the heart out of Met fans of a certain age. And then to hear this, and, you know, I was telling Don this off the air, and, and I think I can speak about this because I went through it with my mom. This guy led one of the, the great American lives. He was one of the best who ever did it at, at, his, at his profession. A beautiful, loving wife, two beautiful daughters. He was living his dream uh, with, uh, with his winery out in, in Napa. And all of that's going to slip away from his mind. And, and I don't want it to sound terrible, but that's, that's, that's the ugliness and the insidiousness of this disease. And I, I, I plead with people who control the money in government and in private equity and things like that. There has to be more money for research into Alzheimer's and, to, and into... And into all all these things that just rob you of your memories. I mean, they call it dementia because you can't say Alzheimer's. You can't really judge Alzheimer's until someone's dead, and, and you can look at their brain. It's it's. Uh, I don't want anybody within the sound of my voice or that could watch this on TV to ever have to go through this with their loved ones ever. It rips your heart out because not only does it happen to the person, and you lose the person twice. You lose their mind, then you lose their body. But what, what, what the caregivers go through, I, I, I don't want to turn this into an, a macabre show, but when, when a Tom Seaver goes through it, the only good thing that could come of this is that somebody as famous as Tom Seaver is suffering. It's not some nameless, uh, faceless person that you don't know who has this vacuous look as they're sitting on a park bench with their caregiver. This is Tom Seaver. This is Tom Terrific. This is Tom Seaver who made your life great if you're a Met fan and you watched him pitch. And now all of his memories are going to be robbed from him because of this disease. It has to have more funding for research. You would think that something like this should be able to be cured. And they're not close from everything I hear. I follow it very closely. Mm -hmm. I've worked with the Alzheimer's Association. It's not close. It's not close. And in this year, where he was supposed to come back to City Field to celebrate the, the 50th anniversary of the Miracle Mets, 1969, one of the greatest upsets in the history of sports, he's not going to be able to make it. He's just going to have a private life now because obviously he can't go in front of people. But the Mets have announced uh, that they, have, they plan a special tribute for this him. Is, this is the statement. Thank you. I, was, I almost forgot. This is the statement, uh, Peter, from Jeff Wilpon. We've been in contact with the Seaver family and are aware of his health situation. Although he's unable to attend the 69th anniversary, we are planning to honor him in special ways and have included his family in our plans. Our thoughts are with Tom, Nancy, and the entire Seaver family. See, when we're talking off the air, too, is that, you know, when you say retired from public life, that means we're not going to see him again. Ever. So there's not going to be that, you know, goodbye you know, ceremony, there's not going to be that last interview. If he retired from public life, he's not, we're not going to see him again. So it just tells you that maybe how far along that this is um, with his disease. So you wish him nothing but the best. But for, for a generation of Met fans, this is a really, really tough day, man, because...
He was the face of that franchise. He was a star. Tom Terrific. And you don't throw that nickname out there unless you're really good at what you do. So um, it's tough. Yeah, it's, it's just a, an awful story. And, you know, we try to keep it light on this show. It's, it's hard to keep it light when you talk about this. It just is. And uh, unfortunately, um, I have firsthand um, experience, which I wish I didn't. It's just terrible. It's just terrible. So, again, our thoughts go out to the Seaver family. Uh, Nancy and his daughters, obviously, um, will be right there with him. He's going to continue to work in his vineyard, and you hope that uh, he, has, he has peace and, you know, some semblance of happiness. But uh, it's just a, it's a terrible blow for baseball fans and particularly for Met fans. He is their mantle. He's their Ruth. He's their Gehrig. He's their DiMaggio. He is their icon. There will never be another Tom Seaver for the New York Mets. And the Mets don't retire a lot of numbers. He's only, no. He was the first player number ever retired, 41. Gil Hodges are retired, Casey Stengel, and Mike Piazza. That's it. It's interesting, though. They do currently have their best, well, the, a chance to be their best since him, don't they? Is there a chance? No. Even I mean, Doc? Gooden was probably, yeah. You don't think DeGrom could eclipse Doc? Well, he could, yeah. Depends how long it lasts, yeah. I guess, right? Absolutely. And it really set the tone for the franchise where it's always been about pitching with the Mets. Their best players were always their pitchers. Really, starting with Seaver and um, right on through with, with Gooden and Darling and Fernandez and, you know, and then right, right through to what you have today where the best part of the Mets is their starting pitching. So, you know, they've had great hitters, no question, Strawberry, Hernandez, Carter, um, Piazza, for sure, right. But it's always been about pitching. And for a franchise that's always been about pitching, Tom Seaver was the best of all of them.